John Calvin, on Psalm 21. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholden the request of his lips, Selah. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness, thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation, honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever, thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies, thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shalt thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the sons of men. For they intend evil against thee. They imagine a mischievous device, which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back, when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thy own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. This psalm contains a public and solemn thanksgiving for the prosperous and happy condition of the king. It is shown that the safety and prosperity of the king ought to produce public and general rejoicing through the whole realm, inasmuch as God by this means intended to preserve the whole body in safety. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their prosperity from mankind. David amplifies the greatness of God's wrath from the circumstance that it shall extend even to the children of the wicked. It is a doctrine common enough in the in Scripture, that God not only inflicts punishment upon the first originators of wickedness, but makes it even to overflow into the bosom of their children. And yet, when he thus pursues his vengeance to the third and fourth generation, he cannot be said indiscriminately to involve the innocent with the guilty, as the seed of the ungodly, whom he has deprived of his grace, are accursed, and as all are by nature children of wrath, devoted to everlasting destruction, he is no less just in exercising his severity toward the children than towards the fathers. Who can lay anything to his charge if he withhold from those who are unworthy of it the grace which he communicates to his own children? In both ways he shows how dear and precious to him is the kingdom of Christ. First, in extending his mercy to the children of righteousness even to a thousand generations, and secondly, in causing his wrath to rest upon the reprobate even to the third and fourth generation. Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. The psalm is at length concluded with a prayer, which again confirms that the kingdom which is spoken of is so connected with the glory of God that his power is reflected from it. This was no doubt true with respect to the kingdom of David, for God in old time displayed his power in exalting him to the throne. But what is here stated was only fully accomplished in Christ, who was appointed by the Heavenly Father to be king over us, and who is at the same time God manifest in the flesh. As his divine power ought justly to strike terror into the wicked, so it is described as full of the sweetest consolation to us, which ought to inspire us with joy and incite us to celebrate it with songs of praise and thanksgiving.